Hi, this is Paul Turnberg with BizTech. Thank you for joining me. I'm here to show you a program called the Visual Part Planner version 1.9. Before I show you the program, let me show you a little bit about why it was developed. I used to work for Hughes Aircraft and we had between 5 and 13 indention levels, meaning we had legs on our bills like this one. We also had material cards like this that were fabricated and built to stock. I always had a lot of trouble answering questions like, can you build 100 by Friday? Now, this is because I couldn't isolate the parts on an MRP report. And when I bring up the part in the manufacturing window like this, I can't really see all the un parts underneath this. Uh, there's no quick back and forth between the two windows. So one method I used to do this was to open each subordinate bill, but there were quite a few of them, so that was pretty cumbersome. There was also, um, I sometimes printed out the indented bill and got, got it from the printer and went and typed the parts in off of it and crossed out the parent assemblies after I looked at them. Um, that wasn't real time saving there. Now if you hit the F8 key though, I think this is the way in 4 intention you might do it, is you go to Info Subordinate Parts and you use the master. And there it gives you a list of the parts in the master, but still you only see the seven pieces that are on this screen. So you use your down arrow and you go through the parts and when you get to a part that has its own bill, like this handset has an engineering ID 0, you're going to have to look at its subordinate part list. And when we look at this list, the very first part also has its own bill. So you're going to go look at the subordinate parts on it and plan for the parts on that bill. So you're kind of looking for bottlenecks or constraints against a 100-piece build. And this part has its own bill as well. As you can see, it can be very confusing without a printout of what you've looked at, where you've been. Uh, you know, I don't even know where I'm at in the structure or what it really looks like looking at it in this method. So let me show you this program and what it does. And I really think it's uh, a great improvement. I'm going to go to my recent parts list and bring up this wood tab uh, set to work order. Sorry. This is a bill of material. Well, no, I don't want advanced system care. Okay, so here we have a bill of material. And as you can see, unlike the manufacturing window, it's exploded all the way down through all the subcomponents, including material cards. So the red nodes here are material cards, and the gray ones are legs. So when you're planning this, if you click on this part here, for example, if I have enough, which I do, I just collapse the node. I don't need to look at anything under it. Uh, the windshield here I know I sometimes put in stock even though it's a leg and I do have enough so I can collapse that. This part here I do not have enough. I have planned orders in place so I can go look at the parts under it to see what the bottlenecks are. So I think that's an amazing time saver and as you click on a part it brings it up over here if you wish to look at it. Um, and just as is, I think that's really helpful. We went and added something recently that I think will be even more useful. In the manufacturing window a favorite window is this info material availability which shows you're projected on hand for the materials in this window. But again, it doesn't show all the stuff underneath, so it's limited use. I would have to bring up every subordinate bill to make use of this window. I do like it though. It's got the projected available, how many has been issued, how many is on hand, um, incoming purchase orders. So what I did with this was I made the same window, and as you can imagine, it has the entire structure, all the subordinate parts, even if there are fabricated cards between them. So these are all the parts that aren't legs. And just like the other view, if you click on a row, it brings it up over here in the MRP window. Now, unlike the one in visual, it does have a few additional filters. You can say only show short parts, which gets rid of anything with a positive projected available. Um, you can include planned orders on the demand side or not. You can show fabricated or purchased or both. And instead of using the operation schedule date, which is what um, Visual uses for demand against parts, you can choose to use the work order want date. I found that sometimes the schedule is pushed out, and that gives planners an incorrect view of when parts are needed. In other words, if your job is scheduled two weeks late, your planner will think the parts are due two weeks late. So I kind of like to use the work order want date for that. And this is an additional thing I added that I think was very useful, and thank you to the clients that gave input to improve this. If you wanted to build 100 pieces due on Friday, what would be short then? So that's what this is. This is additional demand. If I build 100 more due on Friday, what would my projected available be on Friday? So here I see the fabricated short parts. Okay, if I want to look at purchased, I would just change it. And here on the right are the incoming POs. We can print this out to Excel. And you can also print out to Excel from this view. Let me let Excel fire up here to show you that. Voila. Note that this window is always on top. That was by design, so let me turn that off. Okay, so that's an Excel printout. It does show the basic part info, usage, and specs. 
Now we also have a uh, expand and collapse nodes. You can turn on or off the auto browse. Uh, for example, if I'm looking for work orders with the auto browse off, I can type it in. But if I turn it on, then it'll narrow down what I'm typing as I type. So you can see the list gets shorter and shorter. And that probably wasn't a great one. This is a demo database. There's not a lot of info in here, but so there's a work order with parts on it. And we can also browse quotes. If you want to look up uh, quote masters to see what kind of parts are on them and look at them up in the MRP window. Now this application is licensed for any number of users against any number of databases with, with the same license key in visual. So you can run it against test or live. It's site specific, meaning a part could be purchased in one site, fabbed in another. All of the user settings are maintained by user, by site, and by database. Uh, obviously, you would, may not see the same parts list in looking at one site as another. Now, this, this uh, database doesn't have multi-site. If it did, you would see a drop down here. And this is uh, BE800 is my database. Now, under the help, we have the user's guide, which is in a PDF format. Most people have a PDF viewer, so that will show you everything I went through here and more. We also have uh, release notes online. The reason I put them online is so that from an administrative standpoint, you can review the release notes before you decide, decide to download, test, or install a new program version. So let me let my uh, Explorer kick off here. Okay, so the last release notes were out um, in July the 20th. Version 1.9, I added the net this material window updated the user guide, um, and some miscellaneous Excel printout fixes. So I hope this helps a lot of people. Um, I want you to give us a call for a free 30-day trial. I'll let you just try it out and see how they like it. It is Oracle and SQL Server compliant. We've tested it as far back as 7.0 uh, to 8. Um, it runs on Citrix, RDP, just fine, VPN, things like that. And you can um, give us a call at 1-800-804-4715 or email us, sales at gobiztech.com. If you have any technical questions, you can feel free to email me directly. My name is Paul Turnberg, and my email address is pturnberg at gobiztech.com. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.